welcome to Oak & Co. Bridal. Come on in. Hey! Hello. We own the market for styling curvy brides. I just want to find a dress that really fits. It's so like, the I wanted to have an experience like everyone else. Everyone around you is kind of like, you shouldn't be a bride if you're this big. We're known for style, snatch, slay. Good day. Make me feel beautiful. We're gonna find the perfect gown. Thank you. Indiana Jones is terrified of them. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Harry Potter talks to them. Sayasashi. And Cleopatra was killed by one. I'm talking snakes. The second most common phobia in the world affecting nearly a third of the adult human population, including me. I guess it's a mental thing. I mean, this sort of slitheriness of them and, you know, their tongue. So I just have a fear of them. Yes, I can't stand them. But today I'm confronting my fear face on, combining something I love. I know, I want to I wanna start like booty popping it out with something I hate. Oh, God. A snake dancing originally is from India because they started the tradition of a snake charming. It's embraced the beauty and the power of, of the actual animal. I don't know. And the even scarier part? I'm going to be co-starring alongside Samantha at our sold out show in a matter of hours. How many people are going to be here tonight? A hundred people. Ooh. Yeah. You're going to do great. <laughs> but before the snake comes the dancing. The thing with belly dancing, you want to try to isolate, do the movement only with your hips and your upper body stays still. Yes. See, that's different yes. for me. I've been pushing the tush out for a while. Hi. <laughs> that's it. Oh. <laughs> that's a good party trick. Try to suck in and out. Yes! This is so different from what I'm used to. This is a foreign way of moving my body to me. And now, for the moment, I've been dreading. Okay, are you ready? I don't. I'm gonna bring the snakes, okay? okay? Now that the snake's coming, I'm starting to feel much more fearful. Hi. Oh, God. Uh, you wanna pet her a little bit? Try to just hold it for one second. Yeah. <sighs> just hold it. Ah! Just hold it. It's strong, it's like a big, Slithery muscle. Hi, baby. So cute. She's such she's a good girl. Adorable. <laughs> she's adorable. She could, but right now, but she's actually getting close to you, so just relax, take a deep breath. God. Deep breath is fine. Holy fudge balls. <laughs> just relax, just relax. She likes you. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. She's your dance partner now, okay? So I want you to feel comfortable. Yeah. I want you to just move around, just kind of start dancing with it and own it and just be one with the snake. Starting to feel better. So I'm feeling a little better about my new dance partner, but with only an hour to go before the show, the nerves are starting to kick in. We're going live, it's all happening, and this is raw and real. Let's do this. Okay, don't freak out, don't freak out. That was crazy, exhilarating, fun, exciting. Me standing right here just even talking to you like this is totally beyond anything I thought I would ever do. But it pushed my comfort zone big time. I love you, thank you so much. Wait, what would my sexy new persona say? It's 
football season and I have a delicious cheesy bacon tater tot appetizer that is perfect for game day. It's really easy to make. All you need is one bag of tater tots thawed, six tablespoons of ranch dressing, six slices of American cheese, six slices of bacon cooked, a quarter cup green onion chopped, and sour cream for dipping. First, you're gonna preheat your oven to 425 degrees and line your muffin tin with cupcake wrappers. Then you're just gonna put four of your little tater tots into the little muffin tins, and then we're gonna bake these for about 10 to 15 minutes. Now, when they come out, now we're going to top them. They'll be nice and warm. So we're gonna go ahead and put our ranch on top. Just drizzle it over, because it's all gonna bake in there. And then we're using American cheese because it melts so good and it just tastes so delicious. Just put a couple strips. Then you're gonna pop this back into the oven for five to seven minutes or until all of that cheese melts. Now when it comes out of the oven, it looks like this. Look at that. All right, now we're just gonna top it with our bacon. Ugh, yum. You know, this meal is so satisfying. It's crunchy, it's bacony. It's almost like nachos for potatoes. I love it. Put the green onion, and then you have to serve it with a little bit of sour cream right on top. Oh, this is warm, delicious. It's the perfect little size for your guests. These will be gone by halftime, trust me. I'm Brandy, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mm. No more checks. Using WIC is easier than ever. WIC is a free nutrition program that helps working families stretch their food budget and make healthy choices. WIC, good food and a whole lot more. Call or visit us online to find out if you qualify. When you're like a brown girl in comedy, you have to kind of love Mindy Kaling because she's definitely paved the way. Uh, my first memory of Mindy Kaling, I think, like most people, is her of uh, as Kelly from The Office, Kelly Kapoor. But she was just like so funny, and I'd never seen a woman of color play this like awkward, weird, kind of uncomfortable character before. She gets to be kind of like crazy and different. And I think that's really cool to be able to see that and to have that. And she is a gift um, and an inspiration to all women, but especially for little tiny brown girls. All right, let's do this. I'm ready to take Mindy the hell out. And so it begins. I'm excited to have the look of Kelly just because she is such a girly girl. I am not that much of a girly girl and that's why it's so exciting for me to be able to do this. Her face is very, very soft, very like a natural look, like a no makeup makeup look. She's ready to talk gossip. She's ready to look great and also like find out the dish on Will and Kate. She's got like blunt bangs. They're like almost on their way to being Betty Page bangs, but they're not quite there. Hard bangs, awesome. Ah! <laughs> I love it, I love this lip. I would never wear my lips like this, or my eyes. So it's very cool to see this as like, you know, just living my Kelly Kapoor truth. This is Mindy Kaling from The Mindy Project. You have her with a single braid, which is her kind of like, I'm ready to work, I'm a doctor, I'm here, look. And then also like her makeup looks pretty dramatic around the eyes to me, but I don't wear a lot of makeup, so maybe it's just a normal eye look for other people who wear more makeup. It's like a lot of eyeliner, a little smoky. She's got some false lashes, some falsies in this photo, which I never really do. But when I do, I feel like a million bucks. It's like, hello world. She has kind of like a maroon look. She's just like ready to cause drama. Oh my God. Oh, I'm so not used to having my eyes and the cheeks filled in this much. This <laughs> definitely reminds me of Mindy on the Mindy Project. She's just like very like, put together, but like I could be up to no good at the same time. 
Wrinkle in Time is gonna be crazy. One of the things I first see is that hair. She's got the, the double like Princess Leia kind of thing going on and then it comes around the front and then braids up top. How long did it take to do that? Probably very long, probably more than 15 minutes for sure. About how much time I put into my hair. And her makeup, you have like this blue eyeshadow and then like a deep burgundy lip. It's just like a lot of mixing of styles, I think, for makeup. You know that this is gonna be from something otherworldly because of how different the makeup is, especially for Mindy. Oh my god! <laughs> I do I do feel like a space impress. This is crazy, the hair. It's so crazy, this is intense, and this shirt, I mean, and the makeup. I'm getting more Queen Amidala vibes than I am actually Princess Leia because it's so much more like regal. It's been really cool just being able to try on like so many different looks. I just feel like I've been playing dress up all day, it's been so fun. I don't have the skill to do any of this or any of this hair stuff. So it's just cool to be able to play dress up with like people who know what they're doing and do it well. It's been an honor to be you, Mindy. The Judgment Free Zone is where you belong. For $10 down and then $10 a month. $10 down and then $10 a month. Because everyone can use a little love. For $10 down and then $10 a month. The world judges, we don't. Join now in club or online at planetfitness.com. Planet Fitness, be free. Join Planet Fitness today. Hurry offer ends June 14th. Join in club or online at planetfitness.com. Hey, what's up? It's Kelsey Ballerini. I'm here at Young Hollywood. We're hanging out and I'm going to explain these loops. So here we go. The first one is from the song End of the World. The sky kept falling, but we danced in it. So the sky is falling, the end of the world, that whole idea is like always negative. And the idea of dancing in it is just kind of saying like, it could be anything bad in life, but we're just gonna like celebrate it and get through it together. That's what that means. Gosh, I sound so sappy. <laughs> I hate Shakespeare and Gosling and cakes with white frosting to nails and a heart-shaped tattoo. I think Cupid is stupid and violets are purple, not blue. Because it's five years later and you can't get off of the elevator from high school. It's actually my favorite line in the song. It's the idea of you can't stop growing up, you know? You can always like mark times in your life and you can remember them and you can reflect on them, but you can't go back to them. And high school I feel like is one of those times where it's like a lot of people always want to stay there and stay who they are, what, whatever character they are in that chapter of their life, but you can't. Oh, music, like a 17 soundtrack when you look at me like that. So there's a song called Music on the Record and it's basically saying how love can be like music. And the 17 soundtrack is like when you're 17 and you're driving around and you're like listening to burnt CDs and mixtapes that your friends make or, you know, a boyfriend making it for you. Just that feeling of like freedom. I hate love songs. Yeah. We were roses. It's the idea of it can be something that is so treasured and valued and you put it on a shelf, displayed, post about it, whatever, but it doesn't last forever. You know, it's it's pretty for a minute and it's great while it, while it does last, but when it's gone, you just throw it away. Because <laughs> the ghost of a broken heart don't stay six feet down on graveyard. That's one of my favorite lyrics here too. I think essentially when you get out of a big relationship, like one of the big, like big learners, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's part of you, you know? And so I think no matter where you are in your life, the, the ghost of the person that you were with them, it, it, it still exists. It's just not who you are anymore. And roses just die in a week. We were drunk when we met, so we don't know Whoops. <laughs> oh, and I'm far too vain to kiss in the rain. The clouds they are numbered tonight. No, no. You're so in your head about it, you can't get your heart around it. Get over yourself. 
I think sometimes, especially with a breakup, you're you're so in your head about it, like you make up these stories and scenarios to make it worse than it is all the time. But I think when you do that, or you talk about it too much or whatever, you actually don't process it and you don't get anywhere, you're stuck. Square pegs make the world go round. This is a song on my first album and it means essentially to be yourself. What's the actual like quote? You can't fit a square peg in a round hole, is that right? It's basically saying you're not supposed to fit. <laughs> like if we were all the same, then what's the point of life? I wear my pain like stilettos because stilettos are not comfortable, but they're pretty. And I'll always love you, but I don't have to sing it for worse or for better don't rhyme they say i got the right one so now i should write one but i'd rather just show you tonight sitting in the middle of a flame still burning and boy i ain't your match so sassy um this is from exo my first album it's about being with this guy who's still in love with his ex-girlfriend and she still like holds the flame and this chick's like why am i wasting my time when i'm literally watching you like want to be with someone else boy bye i hate love songs the old and the new well, i hate love songs but i They're pulling me onto another task force. I want you to join me. What's the case? Biggie Smalls. Valletta Wallace believes that the LAPD played a part in her son's murder. There is a very real possibility that the murder of Biggie Smalls is directly related to the murder of Tupac. I just want to solve this thing. Biggie was 24 when he was killed. Tupac was 25. Kids, man.